doers. My name is Jose Ignacio, and I have another surprise for you today. We're going to be talking about a few different things. But first, here at Stealthywood, we try our best to avoid errors, especially costly ones, because we like saving money. But unfortunately, as we continue to grow, we're more prone to making a couple mistakes. A couple of odupsies, I might add. Now, as we have more things and people to manage, these things tend to happen. Now, without an efficient, reliable system in place, vital information can get lost, and sometimes employees can overstep their responsibilities. Thanks to the approval and warning features in Odoo, we can easily share information and control orders. Now, with approvals, we can even set orders to require manager validation above a certain price limit. Steve, we don't want you buying monitors, gaming monitors and stuff. Or we can also use warnings that allow us to display notifications while employees create orders. Not only can we grab their attention without an issue, but we can also entirely block them from completing an order with a specific product or vendor. And this types of limits can, you know, allow you to do a few different things. But enough chit chat, as I always say, let's dive into Odoo and see how this works. Here we are on our purchase dashboard. Now we recently hired someone and this is our scenario and we've hired someone to help with the growing list of purchase orders. Now using approvals ensures that we can control what they are ordering, especially if those orders are expensive. No more buying 5 million pencils. Now to use approvals, we need to go to the purchase app and we're already here. So that is a little bit of saving time or time saver. And then we're gonna head into configuration and we're gonna select settings. And then we're gonna go over here into orders. And you guessed it, we're going to enable purchase order approval for an order to require a purchase administrator's approval. Now that was a bit of a tongue twister. Now, then we're going to set the minimum amounts and what amount we want. Let's say half a grand, so 500 USD here. So if a user creates an RFQ that's $500, or higher, it requires administrator approval. And everything looks good here now for us. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save. Okay, this is all done and we're nice and set. Now next, we wanna check the new employee's access rights are correctly configured. So let's go on over to general settings. And once that we're here, we're gonna hit manage users. And after this, we're going to want to select the employee that we wish to modify. And in our case, we're going to modify a very important employee named Joe Employee. Yes, a very real name. And we're going to click into edit for this card. Now, after this, we're going to want to scroll down in here. And we're going to reach the inventory section to find the purchase app access rights. Now, whatever is set here, we're going to want to set it to and we're going to need to set it to this user. And then we're going to hit save. And once that we're done, and the reason why I'm doing this, by the way, is so if a purchase order approval is in place, any employees with user access rights will need approval with or will need approval from employees with administrator access rights, not the reverse. And this is in order to complete a purchase. Now, if you're an administrator, Odoo allows you to change anybody's access rights at any time because we love allowing our power users to have so many features. Now. What does this look like though? Well, we could do that with a little bit of movie magic. So we're gonna head on over here. And what do we have? Now let's see what happens when my new employee creates a request for a quotation that totals more than $500. Because we always believe in practicing what we teach. Now we're gonna head on over to purchase, purchase, and we're gonna select a vendor. And we're gonna go with the legendary Azure Interior. And we need a product and as Jose Ignacio, I always choose the most efficient product. Our acoustic block screens and a quantity, uh, no silly quantities. We're just going to select two because we're trying to go over it and we're going to confirm the order. And there it is. As we can see, the request for quotation status didn't change to purchase order. Instead, we now have a to approve step that's been added. Now, what does that mean? Well, viewers if we switch back to my main admin account and this time we go into purchase orders rfqs there it is don't we see it now we'll see 
Joe's newly recreated RFQ with a to approve status. Now, if we want to quickly view all orders that are in need of approvals, we can also just simply filter it by to approve. And in order to reach this menu, you want to head on over here to our filters underneath our search bar. And you want to go over here and to approve. Now, let's approve that RFQ. So we're going to select it. And we're going to select approve. And then once that's done, as you can finally see, the RFQ is now converted into a purchase order. Easy. Am I right? Now, the new employee is still learning the ins and outs of the company as well. So we should also implement a few warnings into the workflow. We want to make sure they know certain limitations about the products and vendors as they continue to create RFQs. And honestly, these warnings are super helpful for the entire Stealthy Wood team, as we tend to forget things when in a rush. Even Jose Ignacio likes to run sometimes when he should be walking. Now to use warnings, we go to the purchase. And now we're going to go back into configuration. And we're going to go into settings. And you guessed it, we're going into orders. And once this finally loads, we're going to enable warnings. And as always, when we're done with configuration, what do we do, O-Doers? We hit save. So, once that that is done, warnings can be set on both products and vendors. And they come in two types, two flavors, I might add. They come in simple warnings and blocking messages. Now, first, let's add a simple warning to a vendor. We want employees to be notified about this vendor and how they're famously slow to respond to requests for quotations. This important information may prompt some to consider or reconsider their vendor choice, especially if they're in a hurry to purchase something. Maybe we've run out of mugs. They are very popular here at Stealthy Wood. So how do we do this? Well, let's go back over here into orders and vendors. And we're going to select Azure Interior. And once that we're inside of Azure Interior, we're going to hit edit. And here we go into internal notes. Warning on the purchase order. Now, here we'll select warning from the drop down. And as we only want to notify employees about this vendor's sluggish reputation, not completely prevent them from creating a purchase order, we're going to type a little warning here and we're going to say unresponsive. Don't use if in a rush. A very nice, polite internal message. And as always, we're going to want to hit save. Now, let's add a blocking message to a product, because we did say we had two flavors. Now, we want to prevent employees from making any RFQs with specific products. But how do we do this, and why do we do this? Well, it's because we were informed that this particular item will be out of stock for several months. We've heard this before time and time again about stock constraints. But how do we do this? We're going to go back over here to our products, select products, and we're going to go with the cabinet with doors. Now we're going to go into the edits and finally into our purchase tab and warning when purchasing this product. Now here we'll select the blocking message from the drop down to completely prevent employees from creating a purchase order with this product. And we're going to need to, you know, type our little message in the text box right below. And what are we going to type? We're going to type not in stock until further notice. Now, once that we're done, we can finally hit save and it is saved. But we like to see how these things go. So let's see how these two warnings look like in action as if we were Joe. So the new employee needs to actually test this himself. So what do we do? We use a little bit of more movie magic and we're gonna head on back over here to our purchase dashboard. And we're going to go over and into create. Now, here's our scenario. The new employee wants to purchase some of these cabinets. He missed the meeting and does not know. So we're going to go ahead and select a vendor. And we're going to select the other legendary vendor, Wood Corner. And we're going to add a product. In our case, a cabinet with doors. And boom, as you can see, the blocking message we created pops up. And the employee is unable to add the product to the RFQ. So what do we do? We hit OK and the trash icon because we can't buy it. Now, let's say the employee wants to purchase something from the unresponsive vendor, Azure Interior. We're going to go back over here into the create screen and we're going to select the vendor. 
And we're going to select Azure Interior. Similarly, we receive the warning message as soon as we add the vendor. Okay. That's perfect. We're going to bounce out of here. Now, however, we can still proceed with the order if we notice. It's just because we don't think we don't want the warning and we don't think the warning is relevant to our specific situation. So we can go ahead and finish this out if we would want to. But I seem to have run out of time. With approvals and warnings in Odoo Purchase, we can ensure our employees avoid costly mistakes and we encourage everyone to take advantage of these helpful tools. Now you be sure to check out the other videos on Odoo Purchase to learn even more about this fantastic app. And as always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Your views mean a lot to me. I love you all. Have a great night.